Would you be able to give us your name and your job title, please? Hi, this is me, Paris Khatka, a former cricket captain from Nepal. Beautiful. Uh, I want to get. I think I've got this right. Tell me. Tell me if I get anything wrong here. Uh, the first ever Nepalese One Day International win. You made fifty, and you bowled the last over. You were defending six, and you did a run out. I mean, I don't want to say that you did everything for Nepalese cricket, but it does feel at a certain point like you were slightly overworked in that game. I mean, it's not just one game. Uh, growing <laughs> up, uh, it, it was about you know performing every single game. I think as a cricket team for us, the whole challenge was that we had to keep winning matches because you know how associate cricket is where from divisions of five to four to three, and we because we've gone through the whole journey. When it came down to the first ODI, I still remember, I think, I'm, I'm not somebody who really gets emotional, but the first ODI when we played against the Netherlands, it just gave me, and I'm sure with some of the boys, a sense of accomplishment that we're playing the first ever ODI for our country. And the second ODI, which was against the Netherlands, but our first ever victory against uh, any country in an ODI game, the, the match kept turning upside down from this to that, and as you know, Nepal cricket's always had this thing where we don't play easy matches. There's no easy games for us. There are heart attacks. There are headaches. There are people who have smashed screens. They've, they've shouted at us. People have thrown their mobile phones. But eventually, as long as the work gets done, uh, we tend to celebrate very, uh, you know, passionately. We've, we've been playing passionately and the whole game comes to my mind right now as I think of it, you know, three years down the line. It is an incredible experience where uh, the last pair almost pulled it through for Netherlands because we had them around 180 something out for nine and they just kept taking singles after singles. And even the last ball that they had to get two of the final ball, uh, I ran in with this whole idea that I wanted to ball a Yorker. I ran in and I mean, they, I, in coaching, they say that. When you're at a bowling mark, you don't change the whole idea of what you want to do. So I was at the bowling mark. The whole idea was one ball, two runs to get everybody inside the circle. I went in, ran into ball the Yorker, but something came up in my mind and I bowled a back of hand slow ball. The batter hit it straight back, hit the stumps. And as it hit the stumps, I saw the ball come back to me, picked up the stumps, picked up the stump. I mean, picked up the, the bells that fallen, picked up the stumps, ran off. Nepal win by one run, that is, one and our first ever ODI victory. So, yeah, that's how it is. I mean, the whole story feels very Nepalese cricket, as you said, like uh, it, almost almost the loss almost comes because of this incredible partnership from the Netherlands. Uh, you decide to change everything that you're doing partway through. The stumps fall down and you have to, it's a very dramatic scene. But you personally, I, I want to see if I've got this right. You batted in multiple positions uh, throughout your career, but uh, you know, batting is probably your, you know, one of your main skills. You bowled spin, you bowled pace at times, and you captained. I mean, other than taking the gloves, and you might tell me that you once wicket kept in a game that I didn't see. No. You kind of almost did everything for Nepalese cricket, didn't you? Well, it's been a privilege that you know I got this whole opportunity for somebody who never actually dreamt of playing for Nepal. Uh, growing up, uh, I did play sports. I was play, I played football, cricket. Uh, I'm six two, so genuinely, growing up, I was tall. So that really helped me even during basketball and every sport that I played had an advantage. But uh, having said that, uh, the whole experience of you know playing for Nepal, even at under 19s when we played against test playing countries like I played against the likes of Alistair Cook to Liam Plunkett to Luke Wright at under 19 levels. My first, I played three under 19 World Cups, so which, which comes as a surprise because. Normally, how do you play under 90? Is it that you manipulated your age? Because this is what they say in this part of the world. You know, there are people who make it like false passports and all that. For me, uh, I made my first time under 90 when I was 16. I just completed my uh, grade 10 and I, I just represented Nepal at under 15 levels. And after that, uh, got to play my first ever under 19 World Cup, then played the 20 to 2006 under 19 World Cup, where we beat New Zealand in the play championships. Martin Guptill team, Saudi, where the boys who play represented New Zealand. We beat South Africa in the semifinals and beat, you know, uh, New Zealand in the finals. And then came the 2008 under 19 World Cup where, uh, where Virat Kohli, I think, was the captain of India and I was representing Nepal. And it was, you know, the, the whole experience was such that uh, that really helped me grow. Because I remember for us, the only international exposure that we got was the under 19 World Cup where 
if you did well at that uh, tournament, you'd now be recognized that, okay, this kid is now going to represent Nepal or he's good enough to go and represent the senior team. And going through that whole journey, uh, just, you know, kept pushing myself, kept pushing myself. Never had this... Uh, I mean, never thought that we'd come this far because mm. we wanted to reach where we are today. But how to go about it is something where we had no idea. We are hardworking cricketers, I agree, but that hard work had to be streamlined into a direction. And I believe 2011, when Prabhupada Dasan Aike came to Nepal, a lot of things started changing then. Him and with the group of players that we had really uh, put in honest intentions. And over the years, when he made it to the World Cup in 2014, the 2020 World Cup in Bangladesh, that, that basically changed the cricketing environment here in Nepal. The country that was here when I when we were here in Nepal and the country that was after we came back from Bangladesh was two complete different uh, different situation. It was a complete different situation where you had people now who never followed cricket, who never, you know, understood the game of cricket. Now saw the national team play on TV. You had people in hundreds and thousands watching the national team, the national anthem on on TV. So that really motivated everybody around. And since then, I think it's it's been an amazing journey when Nepal cricket kept winning and we've had great uh, you know matches over the years at associate level uh, you know that uh, it, it's not covered as much as it's covered right now but over the years there's been an incredible journey where everyone's vying for those limited positions and somehow we managed to get into the ODI uh, set of things in 2018 and here we are today ranked I, I don't know it's 13 14 in, in the world in T20 and we're among the top 20 ODI countries of the world and for myself, having captained the country for 10 years, uh, started as a young kid, uh, balled off, spin, medium pace. Wicket keeping is something I never wanted and I couldn't do. Besides wicket keeping, I probably must have done everything else on a cricket field. And glad that uh, for me, it was about putting in that effort to, you know, uh, help my country win. And whatever opportunity that came across, I, I, I put in my absolute, absolute best. So. Yeah. Uh, let, let's let's uh, fast forward a little bit from from where you were there. 2014 uh, World well, it's now World Cup, isn't it? It was called a World T20 at the time. Mm -hmm. um, that you were the captain. It was uh, Nepal's first international, you know, um, uh, a, 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 you know, major international tournament. You captained. You bowled the first ball. You took a wicket. Later, you made some runs. Just normal stuff for you. That particular tournament, though changes Nepal cricket, but also changes your life quite a bit from that point, doesn't it? Uh, I would say yes. I think the whole perception around Nepal cricket changed after the World Cup. Why? Because people initially did not take cricket as seriously. I still remember going into the World Cup qualifiers in 2013, where people thought that we'd never make it to a World Cup, you know, like on a, on a, on a larger spectrum with, with team sports and everything. People thought that Nepal was never going to make because people really didn't think we have a team that's good enough to represent us at that level. So when we actually made it to the World Cup from the qualifiers, that's when the real attention started happening. When we made it to the World Cup, one of the, one of the best things about Nepal cricket is that I think we played some of our best cricket during, that, during those three matches that we played against Hong Kong, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. And when, when the world and our own country saw the kind of cricket that we played, all of a sudden, we had people, you know, now they had this sense of belief that, okay, now we have a cricket team. Because I remember growing up, we watched so much of cricket. India-Pakistan matches in Sarja. We had Sachin and Wasim Akram and, you know, Wakar Yunus and Arjuruddin, Saurav Ganguly, all these guys. And because we're so close to India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, so all of a sudden where uh, you had international teams playing against each other and then now you had the World Cup where you had their own team representing. So that really... Uh, I think promoted Nepal cricket and I would say processed the whole growth of Nepal cricket because now people sense had this sense that now we have our own team. We don't have to watch other teams play. Now we have our own identity in terms of world cricket. So that that really made a huge statement in terms of the sentiments of the local people here. And I would I would guess that would be one of the reasons why cricket actually became very very popular since then. And a lot of people know that. And Nepal plays cricket, but they don't know how big it is there and how big it got there. After 2014, you're one of the most famous people in the country, right? Like your your life goes from being 
a cricketer trying to make the best out of it to being the face of of this uh, of, of what well, probably one of the most important sports in the park. It came down. It came down with a lot of responsibilities. So for me, it was always about uh, putting in the work. Uh, when when the attention grew, obviously the pressure grew because all of a sudden, where you're playing cricket for passion now became a profession in a way where people had expectations. People still have expectations of us where they watch the IPL, the Big Bash, and expect us to play in the same manner. Like I mean, Nepal doesn't bat. I mean, our batting's not as strong as our bowling, or that that catch should have been taken, or the bowler didn't ball well. These are expectations grown around watching international cricket for our homegrown cricket loving you know spectators and and for me just this whole journey of experiencing watching cricket on tv then you know going on to represent nepal and playing the world cup and then just this attention that came across myself and the whole cricket team it, it is amazing why because all of a sudden when people started recognizing me i took it as a point where cricket's now reached a level where if, if somebody recognized me, it would mean that cricket has reached to that household or to that person. And that actually gave me a sense of satisfaction. And and to this day, it still gives me this sense of responsibility that when people come across and say, you know, you guys did this or you've done that, it, it, it makes me and I'm sure it makes a lot of cricketers of my generation and the current cricket team responsible that we now are under a lot of eyes. People want us to do well. And again, uh, there's one thing I keep telling our junior cricketers is that when people really, uh, you know, bash us when we lose, it's like, <coughs> sorry, change the team, change the captain. You know, this play is not good enough. I think we should, I've, I've told the players that we should take it in a positive way. Now, let's take it very positive. The criticism will, will come because now people want us to win. And let's turn it into a motivating factor where because people want us to win, we have to make sure that we don't, listen too much of what's happening outside, but focus on the fact that we need to keep pushing ourselves. And if we keep pushing ourselves, I mean, in sport, you might win and lose, but the effort has to be there. And please turn it into an opportunity where if you do well, the world lies on you and it'll, it'll help you individually as well as a country for us to grow as a cricketing nation. Uh, can you tell me about the tattoo on your hand? It's, I've written it as invincible. This is something where I wanted to remind myself that wherever I went out there to bat, I looked at it and told myself that you are not going to get out. So it's just one of the one of the words that I really liked. Uh, just 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 made me realize. I mean, everyone's beatable. There's there's nothing and nobody who's invincible or unbeatable. But the whole idea is that uh, this word is something that really came across me uh, when I was very young, and I thought that when I grew up, I'll get it into it, into a tattoo, and I have it on my left forearm. So just to remind me that. No matter how difficult the situation or circumstances, I'll have to think that I can go across and come go past that situation and come out as a winner. I mean, to, to me, that sort of sums you up very much as a you know as a cricketer and as an athlete. Um, I mean, you were talking about this before. I think you could have gone on to play lots of different sports. You you know that's why you can bat and bowl and bowl spin and all these different things. But for me, it was you know watching you play. It was always the attitude and the uh, I suppose leadership at a certain point. I always felt like you were a force of nature, and that invincible sort of sums it up. Where you just went, I'm just going to keep going. Um, is that something that came from your family, or is that just something that came from within you? I think this is something where growing up, I've, I've always wanted to excel in whatever field that I chose to. So I was a brilliant student. So so I still remember from grade. I mean, from kindergarten to grade two, I, I used to stand first in my class. And then and all of a sudden, um, when I was in grade two, there's this girl who came up and then I became second or third. And then that girl who is now a doctor never let anybody come first. She, she kept, you know, <laughs> becoming the class topper, the school topper or whatever. So for me, it, it is about being very competitive. I'm very competitive by nature. Uh, even if it comes down to a warm-up game before a practice session or a match or everything that I put my heart and soul into, I, I, I wanted to put in my absolute best. One thing that I always did was I never took results as too much of a big deal. Why? Because when I went on a cricket field, I always believed that all you could do was put in your absolute best. And after that, the results really wouldn't matter. Why? Because when you go onto a cricket field and put in your 100% and you come out of it after the game, you make mistakes. There are times when you've made wrong decisions, but you come back and rectify those mistakes if you have made mistakes. Or even if you have done well, you still 
adapt to say, what are the things that I can improve on to the next game? So that way, winning and losing did matter, but it did not matter to me as personally. Why? Because I always had this hunger in me that, the satisfaction wasn't there. It was always about, you know, so we're playing at Division 5. We have to, you know, score runs. I, I wanted to score as many runs as possible individually. When others around did not score runs, and did not take wickets. As a captain, I really felt that it was my responsibility to do so. And I did. I really did not rely on anybody. So being an all-rounder, it helped because if it wasn't for the bat, I would somehow, you know, ball and try and squeeze in the overs or take a wicket. And even on a field, I made sure that if it was a 300 balls, I, I'm somebody who's very vocal on a cricket field. So would probably mean I, I would actually be voicing almost 300 balls if, I, if it comes to a 50 over game, 120 balls. So the energy levels have been such that growing up, being very competitive with myself, it wasn't about comparing myself to people around me with my teammates or the players in the associate or test countries, whatever. Level. I wanted to become a better version of myself every single day. So that, 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 that drive in me kept pushing me. And... The other thing I, I took really seriously was how I practiced. Eventually, initially, it wasn't serious cricket, but when things started getting serious, I practiced very, very seriously, very hard. And for me, actually, the matches became easier. I, I know it sounds a bit cliche, but whenever it came to uh, uh, match situations, I would absolutely love it. Uh, I know I said it to my teammates, we don't like it. Batting at 10 for 2 would give me the thrill. You know, I batted number 4 for a very long time. Uh, 30 for 3 would mean that that grit would help me score runs and then 180 for 2 or 100 for 1 if even my stats I don't know how the stats are you'd know the stats <laughs> if, if you really pull down the stats the, the statistics were in great so anything uh, that put me under pressure actually brought the best out of me and that actually gave me that this whole sense of uh, you know pushing myself every single time I mean, it, it's interesting. You, there's a lot of players at the start of, especially the associate cricket journey that are a bit like you, that do a bit of everything that are, I mean, you know, listening to you here, you sound a lot more like a self-help guru than a cricketer. Um, you know, you, you, should, you should be traveling America where, you know, filling out auditoriums with people um, hearing your story. But you, you were the perfect cricketer at, at the right time. Nepal, what was Nepal's most popular sport before cricket? Football, easily. Uh, still, I mean, football is still popular, but I, I believe now cricket's caught up. Uh, and uh, I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's a debatable thing where you can say either cricket's popular or football's popular. But yep. I think these are both sports that people love here. And whenever Nepal plays, we have packed stadiums. It's as simple as that. The fan following is incredible. Anything online, you know how the fans are. People are on it, like boom, boom, boom. This is how it should be. This is what it shouldn't happen. So I would say cricket's taken up over the last seven, six years, eight years that we have managed to grow when, from time we are in Division 5 to 4. Because I think over the last 20 years, as a, as a country itself, the country never had anything to be proud of. Then all of a sudden, you had a cricket team that was winning and the cricket team was putting its name out there uh, in front of the world. Then one of the, one of the most exciting and a proud thing that I have felt as a cricketer, and I'm sure all of, all of us as a team we have felt is because we play most of our matches in Dubai. You know how it is. Yeah. Where there are a lot of Nepalese who are working in Dubai. You have Sri Lankans, you have Indians, Pakistanis, and uh, over the years when we went into play, when Nepal played Afghanistan, when Afghanistan was an association, you had packed stadiums, you know, with one section of the Nepalese crowd in Afghanistan, and even during conversations when Nepal played, you had Indians and Pakistani. You know, uh, people who are working, they're saying, you know, we have Sachin, uh, we have a Virat Kohli or a, you know, or a Rohit Sarma. And we, all of a sudden now we had our Nepalese people who say, no, we have a Basant Regmi or a Sakti Gauchin or a Gyanendra Malla or a Sompal Kami or a Karan Kesi. So that actually gave them this sense of pride that now we have our own cricketer that we can talk about. And that made them feel that, you know, we are also part of this whole bigger community where. We are working, yes, but cricket is the one thing that connects all of the region here. And now we have our own cricket team and players who are playing at international level. And that actually gave me a sense of great satisfaction growing up where, you know, now we could become an identity for some of our people who choose to go abroad and make a living for themselves, whether it was out of, you know, uh, out of, uh, how do you call it? it? Whether it was mandatory or they had to leave under the various difficult circumstances but having said that at least whenever there was a cricket match happening they would 
feel happy listening to the match on a radio or on a on the Crick Info website or watching it whenever Nepal played on live and just going through that whole idea that now we can also call ourselves proud citizens of a cricket playing nation. I want to just go back to that for a minute. When you were young and you were playing cricket, your heroes wouldn't have been uh, Nepal uh, players. It would have been overseas. So who were the players that you looked to when you were young? Australia. I'm, an, I'm, I'm wearing a Liverpool shirt right now, so I've always watched football and cricket. Stevie G, Steven Gerrard would be my sporting hero. I, I never had a cricketing idol as such, so because I liked uh, people. I, I'm Jack Collis was somebody I watched growing up because he's an all-rounder and I, I was an all-rounder myself. I still remember my first ever uh, coloured clothing with us back in 2004 World Cup where we played first time with coloured clothing and I got number three because Jack Collis used to wear that number. So that was a, some sort of inspiration. The Australian cricket team is one team that I've always followed, like uh, the guys of guys like Steve Waugh, you know, Mark Taylor, Mark Waugh, uh, Damien Fleming, Glenn McGrath. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to... Um, Shane Warne, Shane Warne. So I mean, he's just... I mean, it's sad for everybody for whatever's happened to him. But uh, the Australian cricket team is the team that I have been following over the years. No sporting idol as such. Even now, if you ask me, I like the way maybe how Virat bats or, or Joe Root bats or a Babar Azam. You know, I like Ben Stokes currently. I think Ben Stokes is a phenomenal cricketer. The way he just conducts himself with the bat ball on the field. So I have just taken inspirations from different cricketers at different generations of time. The reason I ask you that is, how does it feel then to become an idol? Because kids in, in, in Nepal play like you now. They want to be you. They wear your name on the back of their shirts, all those sorts of things. The, the fact that not only have, have you become an idol, but you've become an idol in a country that didn't have them in cricket before that. It's, it's a blessing. I think I, I always uh, say this to the fans that I've been blessed with the fact that it's not about being popular, but just that uh, I hope I can uh, relive the expectations of everybody around. Now that I've stopped playing, I've just started the Cricket Academy. You know, and when, when the whole idea was announced, the whole country took it up where, you know, I want to take this all over Nepal, but people are saying, come here, come there, different parts of the country. And it's exciting times for me. The one thing that uh, I hope I can keep, uh, you know, seeing myself would be that I hope I can re live up to people's expectations and people look up to me. Yes, but I, I believe there are a lot of things that I need to do myself as well on a cricket field. I've, I've, I've gone past that journey, but now because having gone through everything that I've gone through and everything that the generation of cricketers in my time have gone through, I think I want to create a bit of a change in the structural side of things. Uh, coming into an association is something that I want to, but whether that's going to happen or not, because I have always stood against the cricket association's way of handling things and management, and for them to vote me into the association would and might take time. But that's out of my control. I'll keep fighting for that. Besides that, I've started up the whole cricket academy thing. Want to take it all over Nepal. And once that network comes in where we have multiple academies all over Nepal, we have uh, opportunities for young cricketers, boys and girls. If, if there's a talent that's identified, bring that talent into a proper whatever structure that we can build around and help them, you know, uh, push into a better cricketing environment. So that is one thing that I am currently working on. And like I said, I hope I can live up to everyone's expectations. You, um, you know, when you come into cricket, obviously, uh, I think we're, ne we're Nepal in Division 5 when you started? Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Division yeah. 5, for people who don't know, is like, I mean, no one comes to the games. There's, you know, you play in places like Guernsey and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so random and, it, it, you know, it's smaller than club cricket, right? Like it's such an unprofessional thing. Tell me about that rise from going from there all the way through to 2014. Did you just realize that you had a team that could do it? Or, you know, uh, you know what, what was it? Because Afghanistan rose at a similar time. They got a lot more attention, but mm -hmm. you guys were doing the exact same thing. I think one thing we actually missed out was the whole momentum when we got into the World Cup and everything around it. I think it happened for us. I think it happened because we had this honest intentions of the players and the coaches where we put in so much hard work, so much of effort and, the, the energy 
worked out in a way where people helped us, you know, uh, prosper. People pushed us to keep performing. And even for us, the whole idea was that if we had to survive and if we had to make a living out of this uh, career that we had chosen, we had to keep winning. And win, if, if, it, if it had to be about winning matches, we knew that all we could do was just go out there and put in that effort. The talent level that we have had over the years has been has been pretty amazing. But what talent did not have was exposure. Once we started getting that little bit of exposure at international level, then the results started coming in. So that whole idea of you know putting effort and that effort now coming into a in some kind of a structured environment and that structured environment within the cricket team only, which is I would probably say fifteen to twenty or twenty five cricketers who the best cricket that could that we're good enough to represent Nepal at international level I think from 25 we've grown, grown maybe 40 to 40 50 even that's something I feel it's still not there but out of that 25 best cricketers we had to make sure that we put in that honest effort and it just came down to that we had to keep winning keep pushing ourselves and nothing else mattered actually the the, the fear of losing kept pushing us. I think that's one thing how I like mm. to put it because we knew that a loss here, a loss there would mean end of careers, end of, you know, uh, so many things, end of dreams. And that that probably meant that I had to personally and as well as the cricketers who were, were in the team then, we had to keep fighting for every ounce. And I, I, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we've managed to change the whole dynamism of how Nepal cricket is and glad that we we are a part of this whole institution. Uh, you've got you had a lot of good solid cricketers like yourself who you know were at associate level very very good. What you know you as you're someone who obviously knows a lot about cricket and you played around for a fair bit when Sandeep Lamachani comes al along, right? You must realise that that you know Nepal cricket suddenly gone from here to here that you now have a player who well I mean. You know, he, he played everywhere um, over that short period of time. Was that when you started? You know, especially with the way that your mind works. You know, you want you want to take over world cricket from Nepal. Um, and uh, is that the moment where you went, well, we could be anything here if we can produce a player like this this early on in our journey? What 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 else can we do? I think we've had great cricketers over the years. It's just that they did not get enough opportunity because at Division Five, Four, Three. You don't get recognized. But Sandeep, I think everything worked out in a way where we're just uh, going up through the division ranks. we just come out of uh, Division 2 into Division 1. And uh, he come in as a young kid who's, you know, performing and is, is winning matches for Nepal. All of a sudden, he got this opportunity where he got to play in Australia, Michael Clark. Uh, I, I had conversations with him and he, he thought that, OK, there's somebody where we need to bring in and, you know, nurture him. And after that, I think... Every time he went on to a cricketing environment, uh, the cricketing world stood up and saw that, okay, there is somebody who's got such talent at such a young age, so why don't we, you know, get him the exposure and the platform that he needs? And after that, I think it's been, there have been other cricketers who have managed to play at different leagues at different points mm. in time. And 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 I, I believe that even there were there were some, some very, very good cricketers, even when I was young, who were part of the national setup. When I came in as a young 15, 16 year old in the national setup, it, it was about the platform that the, this cricket has never received. Uh, if, if the platforms were great, then I'm sure you'd have we've had you, we would have had a lot more cricketers representing you know international cricket at various leagues as such. But things have changed over the last ten years with the various leagues all around the world. Uh, the attention is even now uh, for for a young cricketer in Nepal. If you go out there, uh, win matches for Nepal with your performances and. You get, you do get noticed, and once you start doing that consistently, I think the world is at your feet, and and and, and the cricketing world then decides whether you're good enough or not. And I believe that's that that's the biggest change that I have seen over Nepal cricket's journey. But now we're being recognised for sure, and now it'll come down to individual growth and individual performances. Where if you keep winning matches at associate level for your country, I'm sure you will get recognised for the fact that now. You can go out there and play against the bigger test playing countries and its players. But that's also, the, that's that big step up that you're talking about. So in your era, people went from Division 5, where no one in Nepal really cared that much about the cricket team, through to the World Cup, where everyone in Nepal cares about the cricket team, 
that's obviously a big step up. But the next thing is that for, young, for Nepalese parents, really, as much as anything, right, they're sitting there going, well, my children can actually build a career and, and maybe not be star cricketers, but, you know, maybe be coaches or, you know, maybe work in administration or all these sorts of things. That N Nepal coming through as a cricket industry is, is a, as, as important as them making it as a World Cup team, isn't it? Hundred percent. I think the whole dynamism is that even with the academy right now. I'm here at my own academy office right now, sitting here and watching the kids play in the background. The whole thing is now parents bring their kids to cricket. They want these cricketers to take up cricket from a very young age, and uh, that whatever time period, that couple of hours that the kids get, I think the parents are now very excited. And 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 even even for Cricketers outside uh, Kathmandu or wherever cricket's being played, there, there is decent amount of cricket that's being played where uh, you have club cricket or school level cricket or college level cricket that's being played. And, and people do have expectations of the cricket team doing well. And of course, it, it's an opportunity for young cricketers that, okay, now there's a career in some way where now you can take this up seriously. If, if you really manage to do well and get into the ranks, I think as a national cricketer, you'd be doing well financially. I know it's not that big a money, but then the finance part of it comes. And besides that, the, the name that the family gets, the name you get in society, in your club, in your villages, or in your town and cities, I think that has really motivated a lot of our parents and our older generation to say that now you can go on to represent Nepal and you can make a career out of it. So there's been a momentum shift for sure. It's not that amazing. The viewership is unbelievable. Uh, people still won't push them as much because we still don't have structured cricketing environment. I believe once we get into a proper cricket season where we have leagues for a definite period of time and we have multiple day format cricket, you have the two day the red ball cricket. I think these are the things that if we can uh, cultivate in the next uh, you know six, seven months, a uh, couple of years, that'll, that'll, that will, I think, push a lot of other uh, factors around where you have, you'll, you'll get parents pushing their kids to become cricketers. It, it, it's definitely changed from the time that I started, for sure. Uh, let's talk about the administration for a little bit. You, you briefly brought it up before. Um, the uh, Nepal board was uh, suspended by the ICC at one stage. You personally helped stage a boycott of a tournament at one stage. Uh, it's fair to say that you have a uh, antagonist, antagonistic uh, uh, relationship uh, with the people who run um, uh, and Nepal cricket, which is incredible to think that you're, you know, one of the, one of the uh, biggest parts of that. I get the feeling that you have been trying to move Nepal towards professionalism very quickly, and there's probably a an older generation who grew up with cricket a certain way and are struggling to move it. Is that kind of what the problem is there? Spot on. Uh, I would say you got it absolutely right. But I think it's it's about uh, fighting for the right things. I think me as a captain, I think it came down to, we sat down as a team and decided, okay, these are the things that we wanted uh, the cricketers or the cricket to grow in a certain way. Because now we had a team which was winning. First of all, we made this, I, we, we sat into a, a team meeting of sorts and we said that, okay, for us to get noticed, the first thing that we had to do is start winning because you cannot raise your voice without doing well on a cricket field. And we knew that once we do that, we could voice our opinion saying, this is how development should be. This is how cricketers should be treated. Or this is how cricket should be run in the country. What happened was the administration did not take that positive way because they never had in their history of whatever administration that they were part of, that you never had anybody opposing whatever they did. Now, all of a sudden, you had this uh, cricket team and a captain who was, was were, were now dictating terms where they're playing on a cricket field, winning on a cricket field, and then questioning the activities of how they've been functioning. So we all we said with the whole boycott of national tournaments and everything around was that we have a cricket team that's winning. We want a better cricketing environment for us. And we want a better cricketing setup where there's more domestic cricket. We, we never raised our voices saying, you know, we want extra payment of our you know, a salary or a contract. All we said was provide us a, cric a better cricketing environment. Why? Because the, the cricketers deserve better. Mm -hmm. And the administrators saw it in a way where now these are cricketers who I think are more focusing on the other factors than playing cricket. And we had to do this in a very, uh, how, how do I call it? You know, in a very, not in a script. We, we, did, we, we did it very openly where we'll go out there, 
win cricket matches, show the world how good we are, and the rest let the country decide as to you know who's right and who's wrong. We were never in this situation, or I I never wanted to point out to an individual saying I never picked up a name saying you as an administrator or you as a you know person who's taking care of things has done things in a different manner or wrongly. It came down to everybody because. I wasn't the only one who was winning. It was the cricket team that was winning. It wasn't about what Paris Khadka did or what the captain did. It was what the cricket team did. So that's what we wanted. Where it wasn't about who was in can or who was running cricket association. It was about what activities cricket association of Nepal was doing. And I think the whole country, from media to the corporates to the ICC itself, saw that we have these passionate cricketers who are pushing themselves, but the administration is not running as well as they could have. So that way, it came down to a lot of conflicts and. Like I said, we, we 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 stood up for our generation and also for the future of what Nepal cricket like. Because for us, we knew that in spite of even if we don't get anything, we wanted to make sure that if we stand up for the right things that matter to Nepal cricket, eventually the younger generation would benefit from it. And I believe things have changed over the years, and the younger generation right now are in a better situation. Uh, the 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 sacrifices made by the cricketers even before me and the cricketers of our generation have. Uh, has made sure that now the administration just come and can come and say you know they want to boss things around and it'll come down to getting things properly if you're good enough you play cricket you do well if you're not good enough i've said this to cricketers you should be going out there to represent their country and put in your honest effort if you want to come into a cricket team because you're part of someone's team or an administration supports you or they are or the prime ministers you know Back to you, or the sports ministers called out a name. I don't think that's how you should play cricket, and I believe so far we've managed to keep that integrity. And the results are there to be seen for sure. Because when you play as a team, you win as a team. It's as simple as that. Now, the, most people watching this or listening to this will probably have heard your name and, and know about Nepal cricket. I don't think people in the cricket world understand how famous you are. So I <laughs> googled, I googled famous people in Nepal, and you came up as the twentieth. Uh, most famous person in Nepal. You don't have a normal life anymore. You, you grew up a normal life, and, and, and it's gone to something else. Uh, you quite often you're called the King of Kathmandu, which I think should be the tattoo you get on the other arm. If we're being completely mm -hmm. honest here, um, but for me, you you help make cricket popular in Nepal. But I feel that your job is it's almost not even begun yet. Like what you can do for cricket there. I mean, you're talking about your academies. You've got the picture behind you with Dan Lawrence flicking the ball to the leg side when he came and played there. Things are already starting to change there. Um, but realistically, it's almost like your journey is about 20% through and what you can do for your country on the field was incredible, but you're now trying to do the exact same thing off the field. One of the reasons uh, I would say, you know, I was 33 when I retired this August. So everybody's asking me why, like you're young. You know, I mean, you're doing well. And then I think mentally, I, I, I at least 50 and above because I came to a point where because I was managing and trying to do everything around Nepal cricket, it came to a point where I could not wake up and go on to practice anymore because the the years and years of uh, managing things around me really got hold of me. And And the other thing would be that now I believe that I would have gone on to a cricket field and maybe, maybe if I play 15 ODIs in a year, maybe score... I don't know, two, three hundreds, win four, five matches for Nepal. But I just felt that it, it, it was about time where the, once the motivation was lost to play, it came down to me because cricket's become my own identity. Wherever I go, people look up to me. Now it, it gives me the sense of uh, urge that I want to do something for the younger generation. And that is where the, the whole concept of the academy has come up. And now trying to create a platform. And one thing that I cannot promise is the fact that if you come to our academy, there's no guarantee that you're going to play for Nepal because that's not possible. It'll, it'll still come down to individual skill set, your mindset, and how you perform. We're just trying to give you the best possible environment or or whatever's possible from our our side of things. So that is the journey that I have taken up. But like you said, the journey's just begun. There's so much work to do. I mean, if you if you even if for the last four or five months that I've been. Uh, with the whole setup of this academy is really taking its toll because it, it's it's from managing things around, setting things up from nets to getting carpets to indoors to bowling machines to you know getting balls and all these things. There's, there's something different, but I think I'm enjoying the whole process of it, enjoying the idea of it, and 
And the journey is even massive now. Why? Because now you have people who want this thing to grow and people want me to come and lead the Cricket Association in Nepal one day. And and I, I've made it very clear that coming into association is not the only thing that I want. Tomorrow I could become the president or the secretary, but it won't come to just me holding a position because I was successful as an individual because I had an amazing team around me. When it comes to Cricket Association of Nepal, it'll come down to the whole team. It's not just me being the president. Tomorrow, even if I never get into the association, the people in the system, people in the association have to make sure that they do the right things. They promote the growth of cricket in this country. They promote cricket in the right manner. And that, that will probably mean that I will, for somebody like me, I'll just sit behind the scenes and just watch and do my thing and let people run it, run its courses. But if it doesn't happen, I want to come into and manage things. But again, it won't just be because of me. It'll come down to the other set of people in the association because it's a team sport that we play with 11 players. And when it comes to managing the uh, cricket team, I think it'll come down to more than those 11. It'll come down to another 100 people in the system who are trying to manage Nepal cricket. And if we can get that system up and running, I believe Nepal cricket is only going to move forward. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Cheers. 